Hey gang, welcome back to Zero Carb Journal, episode 18. So, good morning. <laughs> so it's uh, just about 6 o'clock in the morning, on Sunday morning this time. What is it? It's uh, April, what, 15th or 16th or something like that? Getting into spring here, pretty exciting. Um, so I'm having an inter interesting weekend for sure. Some of you guys are probably waiting for this episode. And I have to apologize, I don't know when you're gonna get to see this. <laughs> and I didn't record it yesterday because I got home from work on Friday and I found my my phone pedestal, I don't know what you call it, out at the end of the driveway there's the green box, you know, the kind of the junction box where they pull all the phone lines and cable and stuff in there and then run it up the driveway and mine was gone <laughs> the cables were sticking up out of the ground cut off there's a plastic bag over a bunch of them with a zip tie around it and uh, it looks like they just decided that they needed to replace it on friday and rather than it was all working when i left friday morning so but they just yarded it out of there and uh so here I am, I got home Friday evening and no phone and no internet. <laughs> so I can't call them to find out what's going on. And uh, I could go into town and figure it out, but frankly, I'm having a pretty nice weekend without it all. So um, I guess I'm getting a little break <laughs> from all communications and it's been okay. It was a little frustrating at first, I'm supposed to be sending out invoices and, you know, doing my work on the weekends as well, but um, I guess I'm not going to. <laughs> so that's been kind of uh, interesting, and I don't know when it's going to come back. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and say, yeah, hopefully Monday. Um, it seems like they would send a truck out and get working on the stuff they broke, but I have no idea. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get this up for you guys before too long, um, and you'll get to yeah, and I'll get to get back online and send out my invoices and do all my work, reply to all my questions and all that stuff. So that's been interesting for sure. <clears throat> but um, it sort of led to a really nice yet day yesterday, Saturday. Um, so as I've told you guys before, I come home at the end of the week from my work week and I'm just exhausted. I usually end up resting all weekend. And yesterday was no different. And without the internet or anything else to look at, boy, I just rested. I actually um, got up early and fixed some fences and uh, did some chicken chores and things around the shack. But I took a nap at like noon and, uh, and then I laid on the couch <laughs> and I saw if I could get anything on TV which is pretty difficult out here in the woods I get uh, TV from Canada a little bit and uh, I was able to watch a hockey game which was awesome I really enjoyed that and uh, yeah I mostly just chilled and it was really great you guys I am so tired when I get done with this week um, super stoked as always but really wears me out. I don't feel it so much when I'm in there working, but when I stop on Saturday, I am just done and ready to rest. So yeah, so it's been a nice weekend. So anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I'll backtrack here and we'll get you caught up on the weekend. So as I said, it's about six, it's 6.15 now. Um, I'm just kind of getting awake here as always. So uh, bear with me as I figure out how to talk again this morning. And um, let me tell you about my week. You know, I had another great one, you guys. It was it was excellent from a zero carb perspective, um, and it was excellent really on all counts. I left you guys off last Saturday, um, and I went. What did I do last weekend? I I mostly just rested as well. I did go to town and run some errands. I bought a bunch of chuck steak or chuck roast, actually. I guess that was on sale. And I used my grinder. I think you can see it behind me. It's this box right here um, in the sil in silhouette there. Um, I used my grinder and I ground up a whole bunch of chuck roast. I must have bought 20 some pounds. And um, I enjoyed that all week. And that was really great. I really am enjoying that grinding my own um, process that I've switched over to. I won't say I switched all the way over to it because I went to the store on Friday, yesterday or day before. And loaded up for the weekend and they didn't have anything uh, too attractive to grind up that wasn't 14 bucks a pound or whatever. So I just got regular ground beef again, but I had a great week enjoying that 
chuck roast. Um, I didn't eat anything else with the exception of yesterday. I did cook some salmon, so I had some salmon with my ground beef yesterday. But other than that, I just ate uh, that chuck roast all week, and I felt really good, you guys. Um, my digestion and my um, elimination and all that stuff was as good as it gets for me. Um, calm and easy going all the way through and that was a uh, really nice as i have told you guys getting off the egg seems to have restabilized things and now i've tried fish again and i'll keep adding that back in but it seems like those things are no big deal fish and beef are my number one go-to's and they seem to have no repercussions so i'm on the fence about the eggs i'm i'm pretty sure i'm not on the fence about what they do to me i'm pretty sure they do um cause me gas and a little bit of urgency and diarrhea um but i'm on the fence about whether i'm going to keep them you know occasionally or not and uh, i mean i'm sure i'll have run into them occasionally but i'm wondering if i'm still going to eat them once a week or something on my own you know by my own choice and i'm starting to feel like i'm probably not going to so i i was discussing last week about what i'm going to do with my chickens and i'm getting closer to feeling like maybe i don't want them anymore so I don't know. We'll see how that goes, but I'm about ready to have to go buy chicken food and yeah, I'm weighing all that. So that's been interesting. Like I said, I've had chickens for decades. It's been, a, they've been a big part of my life, but uh, maybe it's time to let them go and do something else and that'd be okay. So anyways, that's been pretty interesting. Um, in terms of my energy, it's been the same. You guys, I've been getting into work uh, or excuse me, waking up and doing a, a simple workout and then getting into work at six and going all day till four, doing 10 hours of, of labor um, without stopping and feeling great. I really haven't hit the wall at all. Again, I had kind of the same experience. I think I had one day where I was like, ooh, I'm kind of hungry this morning. Maybe I made a mistake not bringing lunch or maybe I didn't eat enough last night. But for the most part, it's been incredibly sustainable. Now, again, this isn't necessarily a choice. I'm not saying I'm going to go one meal a day. I'm going to just force it myself into it just as sort of naturally what I fell into and it feels really good. Now, I'm not one meal a day if I don't have that work schedule. I mean, that is an effort to get myself in there and work hard all day without distractions or stopping and really I just get focused and I don't really even think about food except for those rare exceptions. Um, but on these weekends when I come home, <clears throat> it's interesting. I find myself eating um, two meals a day. Yesterday I actually had three and my first meal a day tends to come a lot earlier than it was um, prior to me starting my one meal a day thing. So I may be building up some hunger during the week and then playing catch up on the weekend. I'm not sure about that. That's been something that's interesting to me, but I'll get hungry like at nine in the morning on these weekends and I'll go ahead and eat. And uh, that's been fine. It's been really nice. You know, it's so nice to not have a schedule and to just sort of follow my hunger signals. And I really am feeling like I can trust them and listen to them. And and that's been great. It's been really nice. Um, so along those lines, how much I've been eating, I've been eating, I think, you know, it, it, I was talking last week about how nice it is to finally be getting to that point in my journey where I'm really at that zero carbs zen, as it were, where I'm not thinking about cravings and I'm not thinking about hunger and I'm not thinking about quantities and I'm not weighing my food or thinking about macros and, you know, I'm just kind of letting my body dictate what I want, how I feel. And um, so I believe I've been eating about three pounds a day each night. It's hard to say exactly. One big gallon Ziploc bag of that ground chuck just about packed full and I can eat one of those um, a night just about I sometimes it seems like I don't quite finish the bag if it's really full so seems like a lot it seems like that's maybe more than three pounds maybe it's four but I don't know I haven't weighed it and uh, but it seems like somewhere in the ballpark there and it seems like enough it's about all I can eat at night I worry about that if I eat too much more I'll have some upset stomach but so far it's been fine <clears throat> and um, like I said, I really haven't been hungry the next day for the most part. Now on the weekends, it seems like I eat more. It seems like I've been eating about um, f definitely four and maybe even almost five pounds. Yesterday, I think I did. Like I say, I come home or the, by the time I wake up Saturday morning, I'm just so tired and super hungry. So I just sort of go with it and uh, and stuff myself and it's been fine. Um, now I told you going on that zero carbs and kind of... Um, 
theme, I told you how I dropped my scale and dropped my counting calories and all those things months ago after years of obsessively weighing myself. And, you know, I, I know that even in the last six months when I felt like I wasn't paying attention to the scale, I was still weighing myself daily. And I got to say, I'm sure that it was affecting um in my subconscious or maybe even a little higher than that you know affecting how much i would eat at times or how i would make decisions about when i would eat or things like that not really based on how much i weighed but just based on my tracking and knowing whether i was gaining or losing or where i you know thought i wanted to be or whatever it was i was adjusting my decisions based on that information so so it's been really nice to get rid of that um entirely and like I said, I was just going to judge, go by my pants. My pants all still fit. I haven't been under the impression that I've been gaining quite a bit of weight, regardless of my pants still fitting. I've been under the impression that I was, oh, maybe 10 pounds heavier than I was when I put the scale away or something like that. But I have a doctor's appointment coming up on Monday, and I knew that he was going to weigh me. <laughs> and uh, they always weigh you with your clothes on. I'm going to go there with my boots on and from work and everything like that. And um so it's hard for me to evaluate what that scale really says so yesterday i woke up and i weighed myself and what do you know <laughs> i weigh pretty much exactly like to the ounce i think <laughs> what i do did when i put the scale away so i think it's like 138 pounds and you know i did my cut back in december i got myself down to 130 um, just to kind of clear out some of that excess belly fat I'd had from eating so much fruit a year ago before I went zero carb. Um, and then I stopped doing my cut and I kind of bounced back up to, you know, what I assume is kind of my normal maintenance weight somewhere in the middle of the one thirties. And here I am still there after stuffing myself for months as it were. I mean, I have been doing the one meal a day, so maybe I came back down. Maybe I was a little bigger before I started working. I don't know, <laughs> but it sure is interesting. You guys, it's really fascinating that, uh, to, put my perceptions against the reality of what I thought I weighed and what I really do weigh. And uh, yeah, really interesting, quite um, pleased, to be honest, that I don't weigh a whole lot more. Uh, I'm very pleased to see how stable my systems are um, on the zero carb way of eating, just using completely natural, you know, guides, my, my self, um, you know, my satiety and how much I want to eat, whatever, however you want to say that. It's just, it's been really neat. So that's been um, wonderful. Just amazing. I'm, I'm very, very pleased. And it just gives me so much more confidence moving forward. And if anything, it just makes me um, feel like eating more <laughs> and trying to gain a little weight as I keep saying I'm trying to do because apparently I'm not doing it. So that's been great. Uh, on a personal relationships and interactions uh, note, I have been having a great time at work as always with uh, the interactions with the guys there. The two fellas who I interact with um, about diet, you know, the, the vegan and, and, and the, there's the other fellow who's not vegan, but they're good buddies and they are both, as I mentioned, going uh, low carb, the one is doing zero carb and carniv carnivory and then the vegan is doing a keto vegan and it's been great with those guys they're just so positive they come in every day and come find me on the breaks and chat about all the stuff they found dr baker's videos and they're all excited and um you know they still have tons of questions and and i've been lining them out with uh an exercise a calisthenics exercise for every morning and so we have our kind of group workouts. We don't work out together. They do. But, uh, you know, we, they tell me how many sets and reps and we plan the next session. And <clears throat> it's been really fun. Um, I think they're really, you know, I don't know if they're looking to me as a mentor or just someone who's been through all this stuff. They're both younger, I think 33 and 27. And, and I'm just so excited to be able to share this information with folks who are at a time in their lives where they can make a difference. The one of them is like, I just want to be able to, you know, spend as much quality time with my son as I can as we get older. And I, it feels awesome, you guys. I mean, th that's what I, you know, when I was learning all this stuff at 45 and 46, and I, I was just saying to myself, gosh, I am so frustrated. I hadn't 
learn this earlier. So if I can pass this information on, you know, about how the carbs make could can maybe perhaps affect, you know, individuals about how, you know, exercise can make your life better, perhaps, or just, you know, focusing on building some lean mass and and keeping your muscle, your lean mass built up and keeping, you know, your strength up. I I don't know how to say it, but just how, you know, how profound those those of an impact those can have on your life um, and your well-being. And, and it's just been great to pass that on and have people listening. So those have been huge successes and then even greater. And I owe many of you a big thank you. And I apologize, I can't go online to re- see whose comments were whose. I want to say it was Robin, but maybe it wasn't. At any rate, you guys all gave me wonderful suggestions on how to approach my friend and co-worker with type 1 diabetes who had just learned about it and was new on his path. He was eating Skittles to bounce his blood sugar back up and going through his you know, honeymoon phase, according to his endocrinologist. And you guys gave me some great direction to give him, which was to, you know, look up Dr. Richard Bernstein and and get going on that. So I did last weekend, I watched a few of Dr. Bernstein's um, Diabetes University videos. And then one of you, and I think it was Robin, but I'm not sure, suggested just buying Dr. Bernstein's book, The Diabetes Solution Forum, and just giving it to him as a concerned friend. And, you know, I don't know him that well, but I've got a pretty good handle on, you know, he's a really good guy. I really enjoy him. Um, I, I like him a lot. And uh, and so I did that. I, I, I bought his book, Dr. Richard Bernstein's book, last Sunday, and I was able to bring that into him. And you guys, I again, thank you so much for that suggestion, for all of your help and support and, and pointing me towards Dr. Richard Bernstein. I heard it over and over in the comments from all of you, so I felt confident that that was the right path. And what an interesting week with that. So Monday went in and we started work and I didn't say anything about any of that. I just had it all kind of rolling around in my brain, figuring out how I was going to approach him with it. And come about 10 or 11 in the morning, he comes to me, you know, we're just a two-man crew. We, we do the all the electrical on this one boat, which is a big, huge project. Um, and he comes to me and he says, I got to, I'm going to have to, I might have to get out. I, I, actually, I look back on the back deck and I see him doing push-ups. <laughs> I'm under the dash wiring and he's getting in the engine room to go wire some stuff. And I see him on the deck doing push-ups and he doesn't look very good. His face is, is he looks concerned and he's looking pale. And, uh, and, and a few minutes after that, he walks in, he says, Hey, I, I might have to leave you here. My blood sugar is high and I might have to go to the emergency room. And so, you know, obviously we're concerned and about 15 minutes later, he comes in and says, he's got to go. And, and we try to, um, we get, we get someone who's offers to give him a ride, but he declines. And, uh, you know, I offered, we tried to give him a ride, but he declines. Emergency room is only 15 minutes away or so. So he goes, he calls us and tells us he made it there okay and then he's doing fine and they give him some fast acting stuff he says and then he's he came back to work that afternoon and i could tell he was upset and uh, we didn't say talk about it much but talk we didn't talk about anything we just worked and and that was the end of monday so tuesday you know, I get in there at six in the morning and I'm usually the first one there. They open the doors. There's someone there to open the doors at six, but they don't open until eight. So no one's there. I like that quiet time. I get there and, and do my work before they start the radio and everyone starts, you know, jabbering and welding and grinding and banging all around me. And I get a lot done. And every now and then some other leads or, you know, other folks will show up and, and get working early with me there. And, but it's usually pretty quiet. So this morning, Tuesday morning, um, he showed up and he was the only one. We were alone in the boat for a little while. So he shows up at six and I just, um, you know, we kind of had a quiet good morning, hello, and, and a little moment there in the boat. And I asked him if he would mind if I talked to him about his illness. Um, and he was open to it and, and he was great. He was like, I might get emotional. I was pretty emotional yesterday. And, you know, I let him know that I'm the same way. Look, I'm crying right now, just about. And uh, 
And so I just told him my story. I just told him about um, getting running into my first, you know, getting my recommendation to my first gastroenterologist and having that gastroenterologist just kind of blow um, me off, blow off my concept that I might have Crohn's or anything like that by saying that diet couldn't have affected it. And that if I had changed, you know, the way I felt with diet, then it must have just been a food allergy or, you know, whatever BS this quack that I saw <laughs> was trying to tell me that I had read before because it was sort of the status quo in the medical community. It was the normal answer. If I had gone to the Crohn's forums and said, I fix myself with diet, you know, 80% of them would say my doctor says, and there's no way, and they don't prove it, the diet doesn't help it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and be sick for the rest of my life because that's what medical science tells me. And no offense to anyone out there, I'm not trying to judge. I don't know better than medical science, but um, I don't believe the diet has nothing to do with Crohn's. I don't believe that you can't make yourself um, improve, that you can't make significant improvements in your life via diet for people with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or whatever it is the heck that I have. Um, and I know or I definitely believe the same is true of diabetes. And so I was letting him know that, you know, in my opinion, the normal medical advice that he's going to get from the American Diabetes Association and, a, and any doctor who's following their recommendations is not the best choice for him. And he's going to have to step up and be his own advocate. And I had asked him, you know, told him weeks ago when you guys had told me about Dr. Richard Bernstein, and I had kept asking if he'd watched any, he hadn't. And I could just tell he had sort of that like, oh, I got to get to this stuff, you know, kind of like doing taxes or whatever, where he'd only been diagnosed as type one in January. So he was aware that he needed to start on the path, but he was, you know, still in that phase of, of, oh, well, I'll just do what they tell me. And, oh, this sucks. And, you know, you could just see it in his face. And I said, you're just going to have to be your own advocate and learn it by yourself. And I don't know what, I haven't studied type one diabetes. I don't know what the right answer is. I believe it's low carb, but this guy, Dr. Richard Bernstein, all my people tell me he's a great resource. And, uh, and I really think that, you know, I really believe that you, you don't have to go through life as sick as the medical community is going to tell you you are, and you can be in control of your own destiny. And, he was really receptive. We had a really good talk on Tuesday morning and, and uh, he wrote down Dr. Bernstein's name and all that stuff. And I let him know that I bought the book and it would be here the next day. And you guys, it was so awesome. I mean, he just instantly improved. You know, Wednesday, he showed up at work. He had watched the first three of Dr. Bernstein's videos. He had not eaten his normal carbs that morning. And then he confessed to me that his dietitian had told him he should be eating 50 grams of carbs per meal, that they wanted his blood sugars to try and maintain at 150 uh, fasting blood glucose or during the day blood glucose. And that he was, you know, riding that roller coaster all day. They had him eating Skittles uh, to rebounce his blood glucose back up after he would crash from the earlier Skittles um, ingestion. It was ridiculous and so on Wednesday he came in he goes you know he goes I didn't I ate a bunch of sausage and almost no carbs this morning and same for dinner last night and he goes I feel so much better today and then during the week he he got the book you know I we got he, we got the book and he was super stoked he told me he was plowing through it every morning he'd come in and talk about how what he'd learned and you know he was like my blood glucose never went above 129 today and he was just stoked he was like I, I can't believe it he goes when I when I don't eat carbs the weird thing is I don't need the skittles to bounce back up again he goes I don't seem to be having the big crashes so instantly you guys you guys you out there and me we made a difference in his life and he's already feeling better and hopeful about the future he was talking about you know, going home and having tons of anxiety about going blind or getting a foot cut off as he ages. He's he's young. He wants a family. He's got a young wife. Um, he just is out of the Navy and they had lived, he met his wife in uh, Dubai and they've lived all over the world and he moved her here and, you know, they got dreams. And so he was, 
he was upset and i think that we made a big difference and feels awesome wow it feels so good you guys and so i owe a lot of that to you and to this wonderful community and obviously <clears throat> you know i'm getting a little choked up it just it it's exactly um what I hope for and what I feel like all of my struggle on this journey and all this struggle on this path of these last few years, you know, I, I sit here, especially quiet weekends like this when I can't read the internet to distract myself. You know, sometimes I, I got a little down yesterday. I was really tired and I knew I was just tired. I wasn't really down, but you know, I wonder, I'm pretty alone <laughs> still. And sometimes I wonder, you know, if I making all those changes made a difference. I'm like, I'm still just by myself and you know don't feel like I can relate too well to uh you know whatever it's not true those are just my <laughs> normal like downswing right you're still gonna have a little bit of lows um and that just you know I think about that impact on an individual's life that that we can have that we can have from sharing our experience and from being open um and positive and continuing on our paths to making ourselves as good as we can be and, and trying to be better each day and sharing you know this process here of sharing what we learn and and how we feel and that was a real great example to me of how profound of an impact this can have on the people around us positive impact and yeah wow huh like it just feels awesome so huge success there you guys and thanks again to all of you for all that and you know i just want to do more of that i don't want to be out there preaching i don't want to be a broken record i don't want to be that guy who never stops talking about his diet and I definitely try not to be at this point like I say let them come and ask me questions but if I can have that impact and that profound positive change bring that profound positive change to someone else then you know I'm okay with <laughs> being you know whatever it is annoying vocal I'm just gonna share so that's been awesome and all along those notes I did have one of the other guys one of the guys from the office came out and said, wait, I hear that you only, and you know, we went down the whole path and he's, un, excuse me, he's overweight and, and, uh, and, and talked to, made many comments about striving to get his health back on track. And so, you know, we might have another one falling into place here because he's really curious. So that's just been fantastic, you guys. It's been so nice. And, and along with that, all the other interactions during the week with all the cool people in there, it's been, uh, as always, really profound. So I'm continuing to work in there, uh, you know, go hard as I talked about, go my 10 hours a day and dig in. And like I said last week, it's not sustainable for me in the long term. I am definitely getting beat up and I'm definitely, you know, like I get to the end of the week and I go, oh, how long can I do it? But a couple of weekend days of rest and I'm pretty well recharged. I feel great this morning. So I'm excited to have more opportunities to keep doing it. So we're about to wrap this boat up. Hopefully we'll put her to bed this week or, you know, the realistically probably um, middle of the week after. But right after that, there's another one right behind. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> Sitting there empty. We've got a, a new guy pulling wires in there and he's got it just about loaded up and nothing terminated. And that means I've got another, however long this one's taken, at least a month, maybe six weeks. And that means that if we stay on track and everything goes according to schedule, that means that I am going to get all the way out of debt on these projects, which is awesome. So um, I kind of half want to give up. <laughs> I don't want to give up, but I kind of, you know, would love to just start going in three days a week or whatever and, and do it on a little more sustainable level. But I'm in the in the midst of the marathon here. I'm just going to keep myself dug in, keep my head down. And, you know, I really don't have time for a lot of other things I'd love to be doing right now. It's spring. It always seems to happen this time of year. You know, of course it does because boat delivery season is summer. That's when all the businesses need their work boats. And so spring is always the busiest time. 
And so I've done these runs a few different years, um, a big spring push to help one of these shops get their, you know, get caught up on their backlog on the floor. And it's a little frustrating because I always miss my kind of prime infrastructure, you know, building period around here, around the property when I should be running the excavator and putting grass seed down, and getting the fences up. and But it's okay because it makes all those things possible. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to stay dug in here. I probably won't have too much time for uh, extracurriculars or comments with you guys. And I apologize for that. I can't wait to get back and start hanging out again. Um, I've really kind of missed my Twitter family and, uh, and keeping up with the latest, uh, science and, and gossip and all that. Um, but I'll get back to it, and who knows, maybe it'll give me the resources to be able to come to one of the low-carb conferences or something like that and meet some of you folks. I'd really like to do that. I'd like to meet some more people uh, who share this way of life because I still feel a little bit alone out there. Um, but overall, you guys doing great, feeling incredibly healthy, incredibly thankful and grateful more so than ever. Um, the sun's coming out. It was 34 degrees out there a little bit ago when I woke up. So we're still uh, not quite there yet. We've had a really cold and stormy April. It's been raining, raining, raining. The sun's coming out this morning, but it has not been that way. It's been just a downpour here for the last week. As a matter of fact, it night before last, we had a big storm. It blew my solar panels off the roof and broke one of them and <laughs> so but it's okay and I can't do any online shopping this weekend which is probably a great thing I can save up my money to to pay off that debt and uh so I am not going to fix my solar panel is what that point of that was not this week <laughs> that's okay um I still have enough juice with the sun out to charge my batteries I only need that extra one in the middle of winter so yeah so it's been a great week um other than the weather but we're looking forward to spring I'm definitely looking forward to spring I'm definitely looking forward to having enough grass to not have to chase my stupid bull I got a bull that I think I told you hurdles all the fences or lifts them up and and I was beating myself up but how poor my fences were and now I realize that it's not me he just is not going to stay in and he, he, there's no way to keep a bull who wants out out if he really wants it out or keep a bull out who wants out in <laughs> you know what I mean <clears throat> so he gets out I come home from work almost every day and he's out and some days it just drives me crazy and some days I just don't care and uh so he's been wandering around the property in the neighborhood I'll come home and there's phone calls from the neighbors sometimes I feel terrible but um within another week or two hopefully there'll be enough grass that he won't be motivated <laughs> to get out and the other ones are you know the other cows and sheep are fine it's not like there's no food he's just a jerk I cannot wait to eat him you guys I'm just waiting for the other two cows to hopefully have their calves and to be bred back to him and then he's going in the freezer <laughs> so i'm really looking forward to that i got some stuff to look forward to and that's exciting um so i think i'm going to cut it short or maybe not short but cut it off here i'm going to do some firewood chores today i'm going to keep resting i'm going to make sure i don't do too much maybe i'll play with some video stuff since i can't use the computer for anything else and uh i don't know we'll see i'm probably just going to chill and get ready for this week and i will check in with you guys next week now as i say every week it seems like i'm scheduled to go on that long uh postponed surf trip next weekend so we'll see if that happens if that does i may not update next week and i don't know when this one's going up i got a feeling you guys might not see this till wednesday so if you're worried about me thank you <laughs> if you missed me thank you i apologize for the delay but i will get this one up whenever i can and I hope you guys are having a great week. Thank you as always for all of your comments and support. I just, I love reading them even though I haven't had the time to uh, to get back and comment on all of them. Now they pop up in my email so I can read them there, but I don't always get back to YouTube and log in because I they stack up and sometimes that job takes me a long time to go through all of them and I just sort of put it off, but um, yeah, I'll get back to it. So, but I really appreciate it. And I thank you all for being a part of this. And hopefully I'm offering you some helpful insight. Uh, if there's anything you have any questions on, as always, please ask. Feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to get back to you. 
And yeah, I guess that's it. So have a wonderful spring weekend, you guys. Enjoy your uh, coming spring. And or if you're in the southern hemisphere, I guess you're coming fall. And thank you as always. And I am sure enjoying all this. It's been really great for me having you guys along for the ride and being able to share with you. So, okay. I always say that a million times at the end. This one's no different. Hope you guys have a great week. Have a great day. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching and listening. See ya.